All right, you guys. Good morning. Happy Friday. So we are jumping in now that we've talked about the length of line segments. Um, we're not quite dividing line segments just yet. Uh, rather, the little bridge between finding the, the length of it and, uh, and splitting it up is they have divided the line segment for us today. We are going to be uh, messing with, manipulating with, figuring out how, how long each one is uh, each of the segment parts is. And sometimes that's just as easy as addition or subtraction. And sometimes it involves solving for things. So the segment addition postulate says that if three points, A, B, and C are collinear and B is between A and C, then you can just add them up. A plus B, I'm sorry, AB, segment, the length of segment AB, plus BC, the segment of BC, uh, equals AC, the length of the entire segment. So literally, if you've got a segment that you split into two parts, you can add those two parts together to get the whole. That is the idea. That's the concept. And that's what we're working with for today. So we've got many, many, many examples to go through that cover this concept for us with us here today. Um, this is on page 11 of your packet. So if you have not found it in your packet yet, it is page 11. You can go join me there. We're going to go ahead and start finding the length of these segments. So looking at the first one, right? Find the length of segment EC, right? EC is this guy. We want to find the length of segment EC. So how would we do that, right? Um, so before we do that, we just got to really find out what all the little side lengths are, right? And I'm going to change color because I can't do it in black. That's terrible. So you see that this DB here, this is, this is 30. They told us that DC is 16. So what would this little part have to be if, if DB, that whole bit, is, is 30 and we know this little part is 16? Well, this would just be take the big part, right, minus the small part, should get you, in this case, 14. That's going to be the, the tiny bit right there, right? Because 16 and 14 makes, um, and I'm going to get my pen, makes 30. So there we are. There we have that, all right? Now, the entire thing, they said, has a length of 49. Don't believe me? Well, they said it. They said it right here. The whole thing has a length of 49. Now we happen to know that this tiny part is 16 and this tiny part is 14. So to find ED over here, you just have to do 49, which is the whole thing, minus 16 minus 14. Uh, you do that, it's gonna get you something. Uh, 49 minus 16 minus 14, okay, gets you 19, right? That goes there. Now they wanted us to find EC, right? EC which I will do now in, in red because I'm running out of colors, right? EC is this bit, right? It looks to be 19 plus 16. So it's going to be ED plus DC. That is 19 plus 16, right? That will get you 35. So EC, length of EC is 35. What about HJ on the second problem, right? So here we go for HJ going up on this one. Let me just clear everything that I just did real quick so there's no confusion as to which one I'm working on. So HJ is, is from here to here, right? It's 12 plus that little bit for HI. We need to solve for HI first. They told us that this is seven, this is two. So what would the missing part be? Take the big minus the small should be five. And then now that you have all the tiny little pieces, right? You know that H, the length of HJ is going to be the length of HI plus the length of IJ. HI we just found to be five. IJ we know is 12. So the whole thing is 17. And that's what the game is that we're playing right here. Uh, see, it's, it's not too bad, right? Uh, and we're just going to keep on moving through them just like that. We've got several examples to cover. Now we have here A, B, and C. Points A, B, and C are collinear is what that says. It says some other things as well. Wouldn't you love to know what those things are? I would. So let's see if I can scoot this. All right. Uh, point B is between points A and C. All right. So for this one, we just have to actually draw it. All right. So we're going to go ahead and draw this. And... For that, I will use black. Um, so for this one, right, you got a line segment A with B in the middle and C, 
boom. They said, you want to find AB. If AC is 28, the entire thing is 28. BC, this is tiny part over here, is 12. Well, this is the exact game we've been playing, isn't it? If the whole thing's 28, and we know that this part is 12, something plus that has to be 12. So if we just subtract, right, um, AB is going to end up being the whole thing minus 12. That's going to get you, what is that, 28, 18, um, 16. Boom, done. Let's do the same for four. We've got the same setup of A, B, and C, B being in the middle. This one, they want us to find BC. They said AB is 13. The length of AB is 13. AC, that's the entire thing, is, is 30. So what would BC be? It's just what's missing. So uh, the missing part over here, 13 plus that missing part is going to be 30. So if we just take 30 minus the part that we know, 13, that's going to get you um, 17, right? That is the length of segment BC. I also don't know if you've noticed, but like segment BC would be BC with the line over it for line segment. Uh, the length of segment BC does not have the little line. It's just that. So it's just really a whole bunch of little finding the missing parts that we are playing with today here. Um, and, and hopefully you haven't found it too, too, too terrible just yet, right? Uh, so let's take what we're doing now. It's not so bad. Let's take what we're doing now and let's add some variables to it. So now we have A, B, and C are collinear. So we're going to draw them just like we just did, right? Um, B is between A and C. So the same situation. Here's A, here's B, here's C. We're going to solve for X, all right? So they gave us some info. They said that AC, that's the entire thing, is 3X plus 3. They said that AB is negative 1 plus 2X. They said BC is 11. So here we have the full-blown segment addition postulate, right? We have two parts, this part and this part, add up to make this whole, right? That's what's going on here. So that's literally what we're going to set up. We're going to say that AB, the length of AB plus the length of BC equals the length of the entire thing, right? So those lengths, let's stick them in. AB is negative 1 plus 2x, right? Uh, BC is 11, AC is 3X plus 3, all right? So those are all there, right? Plus equals, the, the parentheses aren't really doing anything, right? So we can just go ahead and uh, get rid of them. Sometimes they do though. So you just wanna make sure that you are putting parentheses in when you add these up together. Now on the left-hand side, we can simplify the 2X that's pretty good. But 11 minus 1, those are like terms. They both don't have an x in there. So we can go ahead and combine them. 11 minus 1 is going to get you a 10, a positive 10. That equals 3x plus 3, like so. Now, we have an x on both sides. I don't usually like to do that, right? Um, I usually, right? I usually like to, uh, none of these are going to move. I usually like to move them over to one side, which is what everybody should aspire to do. I like to move the smaller X, uh, so that way I don't have to deal with negatives, okay? So in that case, we end up with 10 equals X plus three, and then you just need to solve for X. So that game we've played in the past, you can move the number over to get X by itself. You end up with 10 minus three, seven equals X. That's what we've got right there. Oh, um, over there. Um, why does this say page 11, number three? It is not. Um, oh, because I moved pages at some point in the middle there, didn't I? Um, that's better. Uh, so that was that one, and x is seven. We can do the exact same thing to another problem number six over here. And we will, we're gonna go ahead and do that right now. So you've got, I'm gonna give a little more room to write because obviously I ran out. So we've got our A, our B in the middle and C. They said that AC, that's the whole thing is 22. BC is X plus 14. AB is X plus 10. This is the exact same thing. We got two parts adding up to the whole, which is 22, right? So this should be that AB plus BC 
equals AC. Just plug those in. We have X plus 10 for AB. We have X plus 14 for BC. And we have 22 on the other side. That's it. Uh, the parentheses don't really add anything. So you can just go ahead and get rid of those, right? Um, I did unintentionally get rid of part of my 10. So here we go. Now, on the left-hand side, we have like terms. We have an X and an X. How many X's? Right? The, uh, like terms have the same variable. Um, so we have two X's. This would be two X. We also have our 10s, our plus 10 and our plus 14. Those are like terms because they don't have any variables. So 10 and 14 together make 24. That equals 22. To solve for X, you need X all by itself. They added 24. We're going to undo that. We're going to subtract 24. That leaves us with 2x equals negative 2. You can divide by 2 on both sides to get x equals negative 1. And yeah, that's pretty much it there. All right. So almost done. So I hope you're seeing there's it's like you can do it with numbers, right? Add, subtract, or you could do it with variables. It works ex the exact same way. All right. We're on page 12 officially now, if you haven't figured out that we flipped the page. Number seven is ridiculously easy. I don't know why it's actually here. I really don't. Uh, but if the whole thing is 30, right, and CD is 14, then that has to be 16. 16 and 14 makes 30. But uh, anyway, we've got eight and nine, and those ones are a little bit more involved. So I want to take some time to do those right now. For this one, we want to find CE, which is this, right? They told us that that is 2x minus 3, right? Unfortunately, we do have some overlap, and I'm going to show you that overlap in red, right? So this 2, this part, and, and this part. Uh, we have some overlap going on right here. Um, so we want two parts to add up to a whole, right? Uh, we are going to use this with the overlap and this with the overlap. We just have to subtract that overlap is the issue. So we have that two in the middle that's kind of in both. What we're going to do is we're going to add those things together, right? So we're going to, um, because those aren't really good segments, I'm just going to skip the segment part. I'm going to tell, I'm going to show you exactly what we're going to do. We've got uh, the two X minus four. Okay. We're going to add the two X minus three to that. Okay. So we've taken that first yellow and red segment and the second red and yellow segment, we've added them together, but notice they have that overlap and the overlap happens to be two. So we're just going to subtract the two off. All right. That, that's all. And that's all going to equal the entire thing. The entire thing they told us is three X minus one. So we're going to solve this. All right. Not too bad. Not too bad. The parentheses don't really do anything, right? Because it's all positive in there. So we can just go ahead and take those out. Uh, this is what we end up having. We can start by combining like terms. So I have a 2x and a 2x. 2 plus 2 is 4x. Now, how about all those numbers? We have negative 4 minus 3 minus 2. Negative 4 minus 3 is negative 7. Minus 2 is negative 9. Okay. And that all equals 3x minus 1. Um, I, we have variables on both sides. Again, what you want to do is get rid of the smaller one, right? So if we have a 4x and a 3x, I'm going to move my 3x. I'm going to subtract it, go it away. Um, so that's going to go away. 4x minus 3x is just x. We're left with minus 9 over there as well, equals negative 1. If we want to solve for x, we need x all by itself. The minus 9 needs to move. So we're going to add nine to both sides. You're going to end up with X equals eight. And that's not the answer, but it is important in getting the answer. Why? Because they want us to find CE, right? So CE, they told us at the very beginning, is 2X minus three, right? So if CE equals 2X minus three, right? Just plug in the X. We know that X is eight. So this is two times eight minus three. Two times eight is 16. Minus three would get you 13. So CE, the, the length of segment CE is, is 13, all right? And there you have it, done with that. The last example, because we're not doing 10, I mean 10, it's definitely critical thinking for sure. Um, 
I think it's like X plus 18. It's really silly. Uh, but, but anyway, uh, we got one more to do. And this one isn't quite as bad, I believe, right? So in this one, um, what I like about this one, there is overlap. They did not give us the overlap though, right? So here's what I'm seeing here. And you just got to get a little creative with this. They gave us the entire length of the segment twice. They gave you the 3x plus 47 and the 2x plus 26. See how when you stretch that out, that makes the entire line, right? See that? So there's no overlap between those two. Now in red, I'm going to do the other one. They gave us 27 plus x and 10. See how that stretched out is the length of the entire line. Uh, segment. So that's really nice. That's really cool. So what we're going to do, right, is we're going to set it up uh, so that blue equals red, because blue is the entire line segment, red is the entire line segment. They should be the same thing. Very crafty what they did here. So blue, we have 3x plus 47, right, plus x plus 26, right? That's what's on the blue side. Um, that should equal my red side which is 27 plus X plus 10. Now just go through, see if you need the parentheses. By the way, the only time parentheses would really be useful is if you have a negative that you have to distribute. Uh, we haven't had that situation pop up yet, so we haven't been using any of them, but you might have it. That's why I keep showing them. So this is what we got. Uh, I lost a little bit of my X there. It's a little sad, uh, but I'll put it back. Boop. So. Now we can go ahead and combine like term, simplify, et cetera. So on the left-hand side, we have three X and X that together makes four X. We also have 47 and 26, which together makes a really big number, um, 73, okay? On the right-hand side, X kind of just stays alone, right? We've got an X, boop. And then 27 and 10 come together to make 37, right? So that's what we got going on here. Now, I want to move again, because we have X's on both sides. I want to move the smaller X. So we're going to move that to the other side. Um, and now that I'm switching all over the place with colors, I'm just going to go to default, which is black. So 4X minus X is 3X plus 73 equals 37. We want X by itself. There's a plus 73 over there. We have to get rid of that. We have to subtract 73 from both sides, we're gonna be left with three X equals negative 36. And then again, we want X all by itself. X, the term is by itself, but it is being multiplied by three. So we need to divide both sides by three, right? Get to X equals negative 12. Woohoo. And then as far as what BD is, right? They said that BD, Right up here, they gave us the length of BD. It was the one in red. This is BD, it's 27 plus X. So if B, the length of BD is 27 plus X and X is negative 12, well, positive negative 12, that's ridiculous. Um, it's just gonna be my negative 12, right? BD is gonna equal 27 minus 12. That is 15, that's the length of segment BD. So there you go. That is, uh, that is segment addition. You guys for practice are going to do number one on page 12 at the bottom right there, it's hiding. And you're going to do page 13. All of those, going through them all, make it look nice. You are going to skip number seven and number eight because they threw point D in. They didn't tell you where D goes. I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be A, B, C, D in order. But they just told you that B is between A and so they didn't say anything about D. So we're not going to do uh, seven and eight. So you're going to do... Uh, the rest of page 12 and the rest of page 13, you're going to skip number seven and eight, though. This is on Class Kick on today's date, uh, 9 10, um, segment edition. It's on classkick.com. You can go there and find that. Um, and then questions that you have, we'll go over it on Monday. And that is uh, that's it, you guys. That's all I got for you. Uh, have a great weekend. Try to get all this done now, today, so that you don't have to worry about it over the weekend. But uh, that's it for me figure out how to stop this stuff. And...